No matter your age, it's never too late. We are, we as humans are hardwired to learn. We come out of the womb as learning machines. It's just as we get older, we have these preconceived notions. Can't teach an old dog new tricks. Well, that is complete crap. The old dog might not want to learn new tricks. That's true, you gotta want to. But as far as the studies they've been able to do, we as humans never stop learning. What is up, welcome back to the Drum Show Podcast. I'm Steven Taylor, I am founder of stevensdrumshed.com, creator of the Drum Better Daily Program, my online drumming school, as well as tons of other things attached to that. And I wanna talk about um, something that a lot of my students, um, they come into drumming questioning this. <clears throat> it's it's a problem for, for a lot of them uh, that they have a hard time overcoming. And actually, for many of them, it keeps them from drumming altogether. And that is, it's this feeling that it's too late. And that comes in a lot of forms. I'm too old to drum. It's too late for me to start drumming. I've heard, I've, I've had the question given to me, am I too old to start learning the drums from 20-year-olds? Literally, 23-year-olds. Am I, and I'm like, what? What kind of world are we living in? You think you're old? Hold up a second, you know? Like, you know, I don't think an 84 year old person's old. You're definitely not old. You know, you're a little baby. You're maybe you're too young to learn, right? Um, and this is something that a lot of them, and I get it. Like this is a kind of a, a question that goes through their mind, and will keep them from playing. I would say, 65 to 70 percent of my students are over the age of 45. There is a huge move of late learners to musical instruments, especially with the internet. Why is that? Well, they have more time, A. Generally, as your kids get older, as you move through your career, um, you start to manage your time better. The kids are growing up, moving out. Empty nester syndrome is a thing, right? Um, and, you know, my 16-year-old, I love being with him. I love hanging with him. But he's got like friends and he's got a job and he's learning to drive. Once he gets his license, like he's gonna be gone a lot, you know? And so, and we're working on that right now. So there will be a lot of time freed up whenever he's gone. We have the other two kids, right? But even you know, so as we get older, we have this time. And so um th there is a and, and then the internet makes it easier to access that information. You no longer have to have a teacher in your town. You can go to the internet, and there's a ton of great programs, whether you're trying to learn the drums or guitar or voice or whatever you're learning. And so we have these resources right at our hands. So many of them are moving to the drums and finding huge late-life hobbies and, for some of them, additional sources of income, additional sources of uh, uh, communities and friendship, experiences they never thought they would have you know uh, on this podcast you can look back a couple of episodes and look at my student interview with Pooley um, and he is a college professor he's worked in several fields and now he's a drummer and he's playing out multiple times a month and enjoying it he's having this and he just wants to do it more he's like no this is fun I want to keep doing this I want to do it more so I'm going to give you some reasons why it's not too late but no no matter your age, it's never too late. We are we as humans are hardwired to learn. We come out of the womb as learning machines. It's just as we get older, we have these preconceived notions that life puts on us that like, oh, that's not me. That's not for me. That's and some of those things are good. It keeps us in our lanes and, and, and areas of interest. Some of those are just not good. We have this mental block about learning new things. And, you know, there's all these old sayings, can't teach an old dog new tricks. Well, that is complete crap. It's complete crap. The old dog might not want to learn new tricks. That's true. You got to want to. But as far as the studies they've been able to do in the last 20 years and the, the equipment they have to measure the brain, to measure the body's response to things, our ability to learn, they can look at what's happening while we're sleeping it's so, so important to understand that we as humans never stop learning. We reach a point when we get older where learning is slower, but it's even more important. And by slower, I don't mean it crawls. I mean we're just slower at learning than we were when we were children. But learning the drums, you know, let's, let's go ahead and 
even if you're not, uh, you know, let's say you're not 65 or 70, one day you will be. And, and hopefully that's what we're all hoping for, right? And so you're going to have to deal with this. Is it too late to learn at that time? Actually, one of the things you can do that's best for your brain is learn new things. Why do you see older people sitting around doing Sudoku puzzles, crosswords? They're engaging their brain. Why? Because a lot of them have stopped working full time. A lot they stop engaging the brain as much. That's not good. The body needs to be engaged the same way we physically need to move. They have looked at humans that stop moving. They die sooner. People that retire, there is a direct correlation between your age of retirement and how soon you die as a male, as particularly males, females they're able to find um meaning in the day-to-day and and the home life males not so much so if they do not find some other activity that they feel worthy of their time that could be gardening that could be volunteering for a nonprofit, that could be another job that maybe isn't full-time income it could just be another job because it keeps you busy you don't find taking care of grandkids all those are purposes if you don't find that again we as humans, our body kind of is like, okay, they stop using their brain. They're not moving as much. They really don't have a purpose to the day. I think it's time to ax this one and move on to the next one. That sounds harsh, but it's kind of how you know nature works here. And so we need to be productive. To be productive, we learn new things. We, we have goals, those types of things. So it's fantastic for you as you get older to pick up the drumming. Why? Here's a couple of reasons. Drumming is very physical. Uh, you can look back and uh, on my main channel, I may have posted here on the podcast I did personal training for a few years while I turned the ship from being a full-time musician, uh, touring, that type of stuff, to the business that I have now, which is online teaching. I still play live gigs, but, you know, it's kind of, I one could dry up and the other would be fine, uh, and, and I would still have that. And, and there was a time where I was trying to, trying to turn that ship, and so I took up personal training, really enjoyed it. I've always enjoyed physical activity and, and helping people get healthy. Um, one of the things that drumming does is it helps our cardiovascular help. It helps. So I did a study with, um, with the former drummer of the offspring, Pete Parada, and we studied his caloric output based upon BPMs and his heart rate, all that you can based upon BPMs and how fast he's moving, those kinds of things. And now there's actually a doctor that is studying this stuff and these study it's, my calcu- my my meager calculations turned out to be actually incredibly correct. And so whenever you have, let's say we have a metal drummer or a punk drummer that is playing a show at a large venue with tempos that are up, they have the caloric burn of an Olympic soccer player. The thing is, though, an Olympic soccer player plays like one or two games a week. If you're on tour, you're playing five, six, seven nights a week. Sometimes you don't get a day off in the week. You're doing that every night, and the shows are sometimes three hours Plus, we got set up and load in and like all of this stuff. So it's not uncommon for uncommon for a drummer to come home having lost quite a bit of weight. Let's take me, for instance. I was out on the road uh, with the Steel Woods for the past year and a half, and that kind of wrapped up a couple of weeks ago. So I know some of you heard me talking about that. I'm no longer on the road with them. We Everybody's getting along, all good things. I, I hope the best for them. They hope the best for me. It was just kind of time for that to, uh, to, to come to an end. And, um, for a lot of reasons, uh, uh, personal and professional side. And, um, uh, I lost weight over the last year and a half. I lost muscle mass and I, and I lost, you know, fat mass. Now, part of that is I had a goal for seven to 10,000 steps every day whenever I was on the road. So that was part of what I was doing. A lot of times I got that, especially if we were playing arenas or, or amphitheaters, you get that just in walking around during the day, just to go to shower, you'll hit a thousand steps, you know, um, because it's, they're very big. Um, but then the drumming side, we had a hundred minute set. Uh, and so if you've got a hundred minute set and then you do an encore, it's 110 minutes. And I like to put everything into my live show. So I like, I, I, it is, I mean, there were times in between songs where I'm out of breath. I just kind of like, I really put myself into my playing live. It's something I always have done. I lost weight. I lost the weight to the tune of about 12 pounds, uh, this in 2023. Um, so do I want to put all that back on? Not necessarily. Some of it was weight. Maybe I wanted to lose, but I'm in the gym four times a week. So I lost some muscle mass and all those things. Why? Because it's really good cardio workout. It's a really good workout for your limbs and maintaining flexibility and moving, dexterity of your feet. What else is it good for? It's good because we're learning, so we're using our mind. Uh, It's also good because music lights up other parts of the brain than some things. Um, So that's good. We're using other parts of the brain reading music as well as trying to do that thing while, while you're reading it. 
This is something that the brain has to work hard on. You're doing a physical activity while you're reading a mental thing. We don't think about a lot of these things. All of these things are incredibly good for you as you age. Not to mention the emotional boost and the mental boost you get from learning something new, from doing a new thing, engaging with new communities, those types of things. So when it comes to learning the drums, especially as a late learner or if you're if you're older, I think it's one of the best things you can do for yourselves. I would rather learn a new instrument than sit around and do I mean no no offense like my wife loves crossword puzzles. She's always loved crossword puzzles, you know. Um and so I'm not knocking that, but I don't love crossword puzzles. Right. And so I love learning new things. I love like that sense of accomplishment. And she feels a sense of accomplishment when she finishes that. I would rather read a book. I would rather, you know, those types of things for me. I would also rather play an instrument. So I already have lined up an instrument that I'm going to be working on this this uh, this year. Um, I'd like to work on playing guitar. I've, no, I've never done that. Stringed instruments is not something I've done, right? I've done mallet instruments. I've done some piano, um, I, I, uh, the drums, but I've never done the stringed instruments. And I, I feel like that'd let me be able to play bass and guitar. There's a reason, though, why I'm wanting to do that. Why? Because I, I want to keep growing as a human. I want to keep stimulating my mind. My wife, you know, has, has learned to, she's learning all different types of things uh, with cooking lately. Um, so she's she's dove into learning to can. That's kind of been fun, learning new things with that. And she's baking bread. And so that's great because I get to eat all this homemade bread. But also she's she's learning these things. Why, do we, why are we doing this? We we want to stay healthy, and that's part of staying healthy. We stay physically active. And so drumming is a way that you can stay physically active, get involved with a new community. Community, uh, watch the documentary Blue Zones. I think it's on Netflix. You can also read the, the book, Blue Zones. It's great. I've watched and read both. Um, and it talks about community is a huge one for people as they're aging. Uh, it could keep them active. Physical activity is one of the, the ear markers of doing that. Uh, regular exercise. And so these, these things having a purpose, a goal. Maybe your purpose or goal is like, I want to learn the drums because I want to be you know gigging twice a month. That's a goal. That's a, it's, it's, it's not about the money for me. I just want to do it as a, great. That's a goal. This is a reason for getting up. Do you see how we need to move to those things? You don't just have one chapter in your life. You can have lots of chapters. If you're 19, 18, 20, 21 listening to this, you're not going to have one chapter of your life. Your life is going to have many chapters. And sometimes you will put down things that you did for that entire chapter and you'll move on to other things. What are some things that have happened with me? For instance, I used to draw and paint all the time. I did that all the way up until college. I spent many hours a day doing it. I took uh, professional classes on it. It was between graphic design, art, or music. And luckily, I chose the one that I'll retire a million in. And it's a joke. Um, so I chose music because I was more involved with that at the time in the communities of that. I'm glad I did. Art is something I've never gone back to. It is earmarked as something I want to continue back towards. But I haven't gotten back to that yet. Writing is another one. I used to write quite a bit. I don't do that anymore. Those are chapters that kind of closed and it's opened up areas for me to have new chapters. And there are things, you know, drumming is not my only chapter in life. It's not the only thing I have going on. It's one of the main ones. It's one that I love. It's one that I feel like I need to do because it helps me interact with musicians, helps me grow mentally, helps me have a purpose to my day. It's the business that I run, gives me pleasure, all those things. But, it, you know, there are many things that I'm doing in my life. This podcast is brought to you by the Drum Better Daily program. That's actually my online drum school that I've run now for 12 plus years. Not only have I been playing the drums professionally since the age of 15, I've been teaching since the age of 18. Uh, matter of fact, I talked to one of my, uh, or actually my first student a few days ago. Uh, I actually called him to, to see if he could sub a gig out for me. Daniel, love you, man. Uh, and he's still playing. He's still doing it on a pro level. I would love to have you go check it out at stevensdrumshed.com. You can find uh, a link to that in the show notes or video description, whichever uh, platform you're watching it on. But it truly is a community of like-minded drummers where we are striving to just be the best that we can be at the drums. In addition to over 70 pre-recorded drum courses, there's also a tech talk area where we talk about everything technology related as it pertains to the drums, e-kits, recording, doing videos, all of that stuff. There are forums where you can hang out with the other students as well. We do two live video student calls every week that you can join if you'd like to. We do guest artist calls monthly, and I'll even make you a personalized lesson plan if that's what you need. Yes, we talk about the nuts and bolts of drumming. Yes, I give you exercises, but we also talk a lot about how to practice more efficiently, 
how to practice better, and how to get more out of your practice time. I know you're just like me. You're busy, you're being pulled by work, by family, by friends, by other responsibilities. Whenever you practice, you really wanna see gains and have it be productive. That is what we focus on in the Drum Better Daily program. I'll have to say personally, it's been really cool because some of these students I've worked with for over 12 years, we started running drum camps last year in 2022, and I got to meet some of them in person for the first time. Those drum camps have been selling out. They've been just blowing my mind with, with how much fun they are and how uh, great a time it is to bring the community together in person. A community that was started online and has been going online strong now for over 12 years. I'd love to have you be a part of it. I kind of want to encourage you, not kind of, I want to encourage you. If you feel like you are behind, if you feel like um, it's too late for you to learn this instrument, it's 100% wrong. There's actually nothing better you could do for yourself than learn the instrument. Now, what we want to do is make that an organized learning experience so that we have a good experience while we're going through this learning time. Right? We want to make sure that we have lessons that are organized, that we have our practice time organized, that we have these goals that are attached to songs that are attached to and, 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 because it's going to open up a whole new community for you. Uh, Pooley, the student I was referencing earlier, he's met new friends. He has had new experiences. He has had like all these things. Let me tell you something. If you've been a college professor or a business executive working in clean offices your whole life, guess what? As a musician, your office is maybe the local bar. Like, you're going to go up there and play. That's, I mean, I've been in bars since I was 19, earlier, really. I've just been playing music. Like, that is kind of my office. I, it, It's very normal for me to be in that environment. It's not abnormal at all. It's actually weird for me to be in this, like, uh, office-type environment where it's white walls. And that's very uninspiring for me. And so I want to encourage you to go ahead and move towards learning these things. Now... When we're learning them, especially if it's later in life, we have this feeling that we're behind. So that's something that I want to address too. Because as soon as you're like, okay, I'm going to learn this. Then all of a sudden, because look, if you're, you know, as you age, your personality comes into it a lot. And if you've achieved things in life, if you like, you've raised kids, like you are an achiever of things. And so you get into this and you're like, man, it's very hard. I had someone bring this up in one of the drum camps that we were at. I'd never thought about it. Uh, Paul, thanks for bringing it up. Uh, Paul in Seattle. Um, he's, he got me on some tea, man, the local tea shop. I'm, I'm drinking a lot of tea these days. Um, mainly because caffeine makes me freak out in my brain, but that's another, <laughs> that's another topic. Um, and uh, he said, you know, it's different when you're an adult. And an adult can apply to anyone that's 17, 18, really 18 on. Um, I, may, I may say an adult would be like out of college because that's when people are like, okay, they're in the official working world. Because when you're in college, people are like, oh, they're an adult, but they're still in college. Right? So like, okay, you're an official adult, you graduate college, you're, you know, or you're in the workforce, whatever. He said, it's different when you're learning something new as an adult versus as a kid he said because you're going to be bad at it and that's one of the things that i've had to help students face is especially very high achievers you are going to suck at this for a little while but if you don't think of it as sucking and you just think of it as i'm just new i'm new here you know it's like starting a new job you don't suck at the job you're just new that's a different thing you're probably very capable of doing that job and will do it very well but you're new, so you can't do it very well. You gotta learn the ropes, right? It's the same thing with music. You have to learn the ropes. You're not supposed to be great at it when you first start because you're new. You've never done this before. I talk to my uh, kids all the time, especially my sons as they're getting older. I'm like, look, you've never been a TJ teenager before. We're gonna have some like bumps in the road. That's totally fine. That's acceptable. You're gonna lie to me. You're gonna, but what we need to do is always talk about it. We're always going to have to understand that we're on the same page and we're going for you to have the best experience you can have and be a, as good a person as you can be. That's your goal and my goal. And we're going to work on that together. But trust me, I've never parented a teenager, so I'm going to make some mistakes too. I'm new at it, right? And so we have to give ourselves some grace there. We have to realize that, okay, I'm new at this. Um, and as Paul pointed out, he said, you know, people are like, when you're a kid, they're like, oh, isn't that cute? Even though you're playing that song through and they're like, oh, isn't that cute? When you're an adult and you play a song through, but you sound kind of like a four-year-old because you've never done it before, 
you don't have like the cuteness. You don't still have the baby fat of a four year old, right? Like you're not as cute. Uh, sorry, I'm not. I don't think I've ever been cute. Um, and that's you're not. He said it's it's different because they're kind of like, oh, wow, okay, that wasn't. Even though they're just trying. So a big part of the camps that we have here. Um, at the studio, we've got six of them coming up this year. Love for you to come one. Those links are in the video description or the podcast description. Um, I'd love for you. There's the, the, the page it's linked to will tell you all about it. They are one of the funnest things I've ever done. Um, and, um, and we make them very affordable for, for what you get from them. One of the things that we do is the, is a Friday night recording session. The reason why we do that. And the reason why in my online drum school, I encourage people to post their covers, their videos, those kinds of things is because there's a community that needs to happen. The outsiders are going to be the ones that are like, Oh, wow. Did you see Sheila? Yeah. She's learning the drums. Bless her heart. You know, you're from the South. That's, that's when you know, it's not great. Bless their heart. Right. Uh, and so, um, what we do is we get in here and I talk to everybody beforehand and I tell them, look, this is about getting an honest view of where we are in our playing. This is not about having a polished recording that you're going to put out and it's going to chart, you know, <laughs> in, in the music charts. Like, it's not going to hit radio mainstream. We want to get an honest assessment of where you are and have a tool that we can learn with. And this is the best way to do that. And so what we do is we get everybody together and I say, look, after they do their take, everyone is cheering for everyone because this is nerve wracking for everyone. Some of you feel you're not great at this, but look, it's all about learning. So what do we do, man? And there's, you can, you can look at the pictures of the video that you'll see on the page about the drum camps. This everybody's cheering. They're throwing their hands up. They're high fiving. I'm giving hugs. Like it is a party. Why? Because we need that. Cause the world's not going to give that to us. They're going to just see us learning something new. So what you have to do is get into a community that is a community of like-minded people. They're learning too. People don't post things in our community forums and get bad feel. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? You can't even play that. No, that doesn't happen. Hey, great job. How long have you been playing? I've only been playing two months. Man, you, I was not this good when I've been playing for two months. That builds you up and it helps get you to that next thing. Because it doesn't take too long to get past the basic, uh, not very good, to being able to play where your wife, your husband, your mom, your dad can listen to it and go, oh, wow. They are. Did you hear him? Uh, they are learning the drums. I can't believe that. Like you told me, but you know, so we protect that infancy. It's very easy to go from not being able to play a basketball game to being able to play a basketball game, a pickup game. You might not be great, but they're like, oh no, he is playing basketball. Look at that. He said he's going to do it. He's dribbling. He's shooting. He's making some of them. Like, so what we have to do is get to that competent level that people can can look and go, oh no, they really are doing that. And the way we do that is we consistently show up and we commit to it. Now, if you tell them you're going to do it and then you don't do it, they're like, yeah, he tried to learn the drums. That didn't work. So we really need to make that commitment and get a program together to do it so we can have that motivation. But just being able to understand you're going to feel behind the eight ball. There's, you're not behind. You're going to feel not good at this. And that's not the case either. You are a beginner. You're very inexperienced at this. That does not negate not good. It, it, it simply means you haven't done it before. You're new, right? And then we've got to listen to the right input from people and realize that as an adult, it's different learning things. And so we just have to give ourselves what we call grace. And we are actually not very good at doing that for ourselves. We are our own worst critics. So whether you're 16, whether you're four, whether you're 84, it is not too late to learn the drums. You are not too old. You're not behind. I didn't start playing the drum set until I was 14. And at the age of 15, I played my first professional gig where I got paid to do it. And then after that, I started playing and I was playing full time by 19. Full time. I got hired. I'd only been playing for less than five years. You can do this. Do you understand? It's not too late. Get to it. Get a plan together. I'd love to help. If you need some, you can email me, help at stevensdrumshed.com. You can jump into my online drum school. You can come to a drum camp that we offer. All those links are linked up below in the descriptions. But whatever you do, go practice and commit to become the drummer that you know you can be.